Hello, my name is Stevie Martin with the VIA Service Building Engineering Team. This video will show you how authentication is set up and used with Web.Alive. We're going to take a um, brief look at the authentication methods for Web.Alive, where they're configured and some of the impacts on the desktop level. The two documented methods of authentication is what we call local authentication and external or remote authentication. Local authentication is controlled through the user administration tab. In this tab we can set up as many authenticated users as we would desire and give them different levels of access. The administrator has full access. We can give a user just access to using a laser pointer or just the ability to view statistics. The statistics are not made externally available or we can give them the ability to control the tools in a meeting room and or an auditorium. If you specify an email, the email will be sent to the person that the authenticated user has been set up for, let them know what their user ID is and their default password. You can create your own password or you can click generate password and the system will generate a password for you. If you set up the password yourself, you need to understand how password rules are set up for this particular Windows 2008 server. If you give the uh, user administrator privileges, they'll have access to all parts of the environment and they'll also be able to log into the admin panel and make changes. You can set up a user with full privileges in the environment without giving the administrator privileges, which is pretty much the standard for uh, most authenticated users. When you click apply, the user will be added, and if you specify the email address, the email will be sent to them with information. The other method that is documented is using web authentication. If you use web authentication, there must already exist a web authentication server on the customer's network. The customer will then use the advanced tab in the admin panel to tell the web.alive server details of what the web authentication server requires. You need the URL of the authentication server, the name of the cookie it sets, the name of the field that the server sets in its response headers. Note that Web.Live will not set any cookies. The web authentication server is doing that. In a normal login scenario, what will be happening is, is the customer's user will go to a web authentication server or some portal page that will require them to log in. Once successful, their system will set a cookie on their PC. Then the web.live client will send that cookie to the web.live server, and the server takes the cookie and verifies with the authentication server that that cookie is valid. If the cookie is valid, then the web.live server will let the user into the environment. Another thing to note before we leave the admin page concerning authentication is anonymous users. If allow users to enter anonymously is checked, then a user can get into the environment without having to have a password to be authenticated. In this situation, they will pretty much just be someone in the crowd. They have the ability to go into any room that's open listen to any speeches or conferences that may be going on, but then I won't be allowed to use the tools in that environment. We will next take a look at where the authenticated users tie into the Web.Live server. We will also take a quick look at authenticated users using the Active Directory domain. If you have any questions about it, you should ask your Avaya support. We next want to take a look at certain things on the Web.Live server itself, how they impact logging into the Web.Live environment and the Web.Live administration panel. One of the things you'll see in IIS Manager for a site is the authentication. This is not user authentication. This just allows you to access the site at all. For this particular site, the only thing we have enabled is anonymous authentication. If we were to disable this, we would not be able to access the site. With it re-enabled, you will be able to use authentication to get into the site. In the server manager, we will show you um, how the user we had earlier, Hokey, shows up at the operating system level. We added the user ID as a meeting room presenter, 
a statistics viewer, a laser pointer, an auditorium presenter. So these are the only groups that we should see the user in at the operating system level. Note the server administrator group only shows the administrator logins that are set up. There's a default administrator for the operating system. There's a WA admin administrator, which is a default administrator login that comes with web.alive. And another administrator login that was created previously. There's another way to set up authentication that was mentioned when we were looking at the admin panel. This server is set up in an Active Directory domain with contact to Active Directory server. In order to make this work, you would go into your user groups and ensure that global domain users is set up as one of your general users for the um, server itself. Once you have done this, you would add it to whatever groups specific to web.live that you want the particular users to have access to. In this case, we will add them to auditorium presenter, meeting room presenter, statistics viewer, and laser point user just like we did with the authenticated user earlier from the admin page. You see here one example in the meeting room presenter group. What we'll look at now is the impact of these users we set up and how they work with the logins. If at the web.live login page we unselect user password, then we log in as the anonymous user, so long as allow anonymous users was checked in the admin panel as we showed earlier. If we select use a password for the configuration that we've shown here, we've got two ways that someone can log in. For this setup, you could log in if you were set up as a local user using the uh, administrative user tab in the admin panel. Or for this particular setup, since we, we were set up in an active directory domain, we could use the internal authentication system. This particular password was not set up with the local administration nor is it a valid one for the Active Directory domain. If we wanted to log in using the Active Directory domain, we have to specify the domain and the user password. The last way a user will be able to log into the environment will be using credentials that were set up with the local administrative database. For example, the user ID Hokey that we set up earlier. To finish up our discussion on web live authentication. Take a look at the initialization file on the server itself that controls authentication. Directory w backslash web.live backslash session ID, which in this case is one, backslash INIS. You have a configuration file called chainsaw. In this initialization file, there's a section called engine.accessControl. In this section, you have several attributes, such as default login domains, admin roles, admin user group name, the control of authentication for Web.Live that we have discussed. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful to you. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing avaya.